is Jessica DeMassa and I'm reporting from HIC 2017. We're here in the Heise studio with Paul. Paul, please introduce yourself for everybody watching. Hi, I'm, I'm Paul Cooper. I'm an associate professor with Deakin University and I'm a research affiliate with Epworth Healthcare. Oh, fantastic. So as somebody who's educating, I guess, the future of um, health informatics here, what are you trying to instill in this crop of students about the industry? What are you telling them? What are they looking out for? Well, it's interesting. One of the things I've found is that they already come with passion. Okay. <laughs> okay? So, so that's number one. They've, they've got the passion and they've got the energy. What I think we're trying to instill in them is uh, knowledge about some of the building blocks that they need to be aware of from uh, the IT uh, side of the, the health industry, which is really what health informatics is all about. So give me an example. Well, a good example with my students, uh, a large number of them are actually from overseas mm -hmm. and they really had very little appreciation for what privacy and security actually means in a health setting. So when we ran them through the sorts of things that they need to be aware of and some of the do's and don'ts in a, in a health information management uh, space, they were just completely uh, flabbergasted. You know, it was, it was an eye-opener to them because many of them come from countries where there is no patient confidentiality and it's just all shared, just automatically. So to, to be aware of some of the responsibilities around that, but then also what you can actually do with the information on an anonymized basis when you actually uh, pull it together. That was well, talk to me about that because that is, you know, obviously the tremendous opportunity here is when you have all of that data, the things that, you know, can blow your mind about what you can do with it. So talk to me a little bit about what you see as the opportunity. Well, I think the opportunity really is to move from a focus on um, health and, um, and disease to wellness. Okay. If you are able to get the information uh, on a trend basis from people, then what you're able to do is put in place the kind of proactive um, wellness programs to actually avoid people coming into hospital situations in the first place. We all know that um, hospitals are incredibly expensive places to, to go and they're not comfortable places for anyone to end up. So if by spending a dollar on prevention you can save $10,000 on acute care health, then that's a really good thing. We've only started to just tap the surface of the kind of trend lines and things that uh, actually make a big difference to people's uh, wellness. And sometimes some of the connections can be quite surprising. So things like uh, dental health has a big impact on heart disease, as, a, as an example. So by small preventative health care as it applies to uh, dental care, you can actually um, achieve quite a lot by way of health avoidance health cost avoidance. And what do you see as, um, I guess, are there any limitations right now that you kind of barriers that are in the way for health informatics, I guess, as an, as an industry at large, in terms of growing and developing? Are there any yes. things that you wish that could be eliminated if you could wave a magic wand? Well, the magic wand. Look, uh, one of the things that I've heard at this conference and at previous consequence, uh, uh, conference is that we've got the building blocks. We've got all these building blocks in place. So, you know, we now should be ready to go. I think the reality is we actually have um, possibly too many building blocks. We actually have a huge number of pieces and so there's a great complexity with joining them together in a way that actually gives us uh, benefit. So there's, uh, there's a lot of capability out there but a lot of it is within proprietary domains or it's within um, standards compliance aspects that, that, that really they're not yet able to be integrated and shared. And I think there's a, there's a tsunami just coming down the road, which is consumer health data. Mm -hmm. So consumers, you know, wearing Fitbits and other things like that, much more advanced monitors will be coming in the next year or two. They will want to be providing that data. They will be wanting that to be shared with their physicians and dealt with. And I don't think as yet we've got the, the, the kind of uh, um, standards or even um, mentally we're gearing up for that engagement with the patients that I think is coming. So when I'm talking to the future students, what, what I'm really talking about is, uh, is three things that I, I think would make a huge difference, and that is about empowering rural health, remote health, and resilient health. What's so resilient that, health? Well, it's interesting. On three occasions, even just at this conference, uh, when uh, I was going into rooms, um, remote mouse things weren't working, uh, the entrance uh, card with a QIR tag uh, wasn't being read correctly, um, and on another indication the wrong presentation thing came up on the PC. Now we're in a, we're in a conference environment where none of that matters. Right. 
But in a healthcare setting, if things don't work and they break or they glitch, that is a huge issue for people. And if it happens to a clinician, they won't trust that ever again. So by resilience, what I'm talking about there is systems that have some inbuilt capability to um, either self-correct or um, self-healing, whatever the terminologies might be about it, but just enable us to get to things that work more reliably than they currently are. To some extent, I think we've built complexity into the system, and it's now about us taking that out and building in more, more resilience. So that's, that's what I'm talking about there. With the rural and the regional, um, there was a wonderful presentation uh, this morning from a gentleman from India about the correct application of, remote te of, of technologies applicable to remote communities. And they were doing some fantastic things to doing with uh, community engagement. You know, they had, uh, they had an e-health carpet. And uh, basically, the women from the village would come and sit down on the carpet, and they would share e-health story, health stories. And uh, then some of that was being captured on a very, very robust little Raspberry Pi device, and enabling them to um, share their their health record information. And it was absolutely fantastic application of the right technology. So we need to be doing that in our areas of uh, remote and regional health in Australia really humanizing the healthcare experience by using the technology wisely. Yeah, and then we need the new students coming in who actually are passionate about that and really know and appreciate both the upsides and the downsides of using that technology. Well, we certainly appreciate everything that you're doing to prepare those students for this world that they're heading into. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your perspective. Um, we certainly um, like, love to hear somebody who's at the front line teaching the future um, what's going on. So thank you so much. I'm Jessica Damasa from um, HIC 2017 in the Heise Studio. Thanks.